Sub. That's tritone sub. Back to G minor six. And then now, quick change, A7, D7, and resolve G minor six. Back to the top. Again, play the melody. Back at the top? Yes, top. A7. D7. G minor six. A flat seven. Two bars, G minor six. Two bars. And then the five, the five, which is the two dominant, and the and the second half of the song. We could call that the B section, which is really the same thing as the first. D7 and G minor. Here comes that half step, A flat. A7, D7 and G minor 6 and from the top melody I'm going to play it as written A flat Again, and we're just gonna jam a little bit. D7. I'll yell it out. G minor. Measure nine. A flat. G minor. A7. Two bars. Good. D7. a quick change, A7, D7, and nice, Evan, take one, yeah, yeah, A flat, Jim and top. Yeah. A flat seven. G minor. A A seven two bars and D seven two bars and top. I say top in the second half of the song. There. A7. Keep going, Jim. Sounds great. Yeah. B7. And G minor. Here's that. Yeah, I get bluesy. A flat. G minor. A7. D7. And G minor. That was the end of the song. D7. And Leslie. And that's the top there. A7. Yeah, just follow it as written. D7 has two measures. Not at the end, it doesn't. Oh, yeah. that was, that's the only difference, it's right there. Otherwise, it's the same song. That's what I was saying, it's really just a 16 bar, almost. <coughs> nice. Yeah, Leslie. A7. D7. 
seven. A minor. A flat seven. That was a quick change there. And top. Bernard, you gonna take one? I don't know how to take one. Okay, that's what we'll talk about then. Yeah. Let's trade licks. Evan. Yeah. D7. This is good trading for so you gotta keep track of where you're at. G minor, Jim. Yeah. A7. And then let's leave. I get the A flat. A7. And here's the top. Evan. Seven Jim and G minor. Leslie A flat. Nice, yeah. A seven and then D seven. Jim to the G minor. Leslie and G minor. Yeah. Second half of the song, G minor. We're almost done. And here comes some melody. Oh, let's keep it going. Jim, take some more. Trading fours is great. A flat. G minor. Here's a quick change. We're almost done. A7. That's you, Leslie. You get the and D G minor. Let's play the melody out. This is as written. Very straight. A flat. D7, tag it, repeat it again. One more time. Ending lick, one. And of course, the classic ending lick works great. Um, so when I said yeah. tag it, that meant uh, repeat the last phrase a few yeah. times, generally two times. Two times A and one time. 
time B, but you're actually going down. Right? I wrote it completely, all not through Compose, just read it all the way through. There's so no. So you just go down the page, right? Yeah, no repeat. And, oh, no, 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 no. I, I got to take on two. I thought it was two times A and then. Oh no, that's okay. That's why I was talking about that. I have a I have a handwritten sheet where I actually did the repeat, oh, and right. then I wrote a second ending because yeah, you can so think you, of it that way too. You just lose that page. But yeah, and that's kind of what I'm saying is that's why it's kind of an easier form, but it's really a fun song. Yeah, it's got it's some really, really it, cool progression. It's a great song. Great, beautiful melody too. Um, so the, again, the tag part, just to end it, we did the A7, yeah, like D7, the yeah. repeat it. One more time. Ending click, one. And you can throw in your favorite G minor ending lick. Um, of course, that for me, that might be this one. Or this. That's actually the uh, very common. Yeah, exactly. And then choose a cool chord. Tim chose that minor six with the major sevens. Really nice. I like that one a lot. That one's an easy one to grab if you think G minor six like this. And then just put this finger here from the bass onto the major seven, the F sharp. That's how I think of it. It's really a quick, you, you would think typically G minor six, <coughs> like this. And then instead of just, I mean, you know, if you color it up, then you can do this. Put that major seven on the high. That's how I think of it. So that F sharp right here. So G minor six is here, right? Yeah, here's G minor six, G minor and then here's here. G minor six. And then take the G in the bass. Move this finger to the bottom to the high. Uh, first Move string, yeah, higher. second fret. Yep. Yeah. Oh, but you can get rid of the bass too. I, I get rid of the bass. I just play those top four strings. So just put this finger. <laughs> yeah, it's a very haunting chord. Minor six, major seven. Uh, the other one I like a lot is just G minor six nine, and that's like this. So I'll, I'm gonna show you the best way to think about this, because this helps you with improvisation. If you guys just wanna do this with me, do, do play just, Bernard, check this out, just play G minor triad. A G minor triad. Yeah, start with that, and then I know I've shown this trick plenty of times, but um, uh, then from here, take these two notes and slide it up a whole step. So that's the five goes to the six, the one, the eight goes to the nine, and now you have this. And that's G minor six, nine. So again, that's kind of the theory behind it, is you take the G minor triad and take these two notes, slide them up, and now you have this. Beautiful ending chord. So again, you might have this one. That's the nine on top. Or again, it works beautiful if someone else plays a minor major seven. This chord. Get a nice harmony. And where do you stop the, uh, the ending? Oh, the ending lick. Let's all do that together. Uh, it starts on the end of one. So here's A7, D7. So uh, start it on a D note, anywhere, choose a D note and walk it up chromatically, so it's one. So you have to go down a half step below. Yeah, you have to go below it, one, one. I'm demonstrating it on one string. I generally like to cross over strings. Yes, exactly. So I do this one. Or you can do it like this. Or like this. And you hit all the notes. All, yeah. All of them. Right? Yeah. All no, of them. Chromatic. That's chromatic, yeah, yeah, chromatic. But it goes down a half step first. One. Like this. One. Yeah. You can do it with octaves. One. And then choose your ending chord. It starts on the fifth degree of the key that you're going to resolve to, the fifth. Yeah, always the fifth. 
Unless you want to do a harmony of this. Yeah, octaves. Yeah, octaves is nice. Three, four, one. I, yeah, I would do it all down at, at that tempo. One. Okay. If I'm doing it really fast, one. Then I would. Then I would just slide it. It was descent. This is a chromatic descending lick on the five. You can walk down to the G and go like this. One. I like that a lot too. Yeah, think of it. Yeah, as you can see it on one string really clearly. One. And then choose your chord. Uh, no, minor six major, minor six with the, uh, with the uh, major seven. Yeah, the same chord again. A uh, diminished, um, I like to end on a diminished chord often and it makes it kind of um, bluesy and haunting at the same time. As long as someone else is kind of, you know, grounding it. But no, I wouldn't recommend diminish right now. I would just say minor six, minor six, major seven, minor six with the nine added on. I mean, that's a lot of color right there. Diminish major seven. Yeah, seriously, I mean, those are nice colors. Um, maybe maybe a, um, a modern jazz guy would go for a minor 11, maybe like this. You know, something like that. They want that more like Pat Metheny sound or something. To so go like this one. Yeah. Add some color on minor. Yeah. So there's no rules. I'm just kind of showing you more to the gypsy jazz style. But try to try to make up your own um, variations. Add nine like this. You know now. Okay. Now don't get me started on cool chords because I love cool <laughs> chords. But but now that's a minor add nine chord. And it has that little crunch that's really sweet. That I'm not doing the full bar chord. The full bar chord would be this. Everybody knows this song. Well, actually, you know, the police. So that's that minor. And you could also do it up here. You know, again, it kind of is that haunting chord for that minor at nine. This. The easiest way to think of an add nine chord, by the way, is just take from the root, from the octave. Yeah, that's a, a nine. This is where the theory comes in. The nine is a, the, the easiest way to get the nine is to take your root and your octave and go up a whole step. That's how you get a nine. So here's G minor triad again. Now I'm taking my root and going up. I mean, it's a big stretch, but now I got the add nine. A uh, second string here. Right. If you do the G. You do it on the first string. You do it on the first string. First string, you mean here, like this? Right. Right. This so that'd be this sound. So you said like this. So that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. That's a stretch. And Les <laughs> Leslie made a good point too. If you do, if you want that flavor, but you don't want to do the stretch, you could get it on the high string instead. Go up an octave. Yeah. But now we lose that crunch, so I would want to get that crunch back in. <laughs> and now I would do this, you know, or something like that, or try to get that. I'd like to hear this crunch, just... That's what's created when you have the B flat and the A. So that's where I would probably just do it over here. Here's, so here's a G minor triad bar chord. I'm just taking my octave and I'm going up a whole step. You hear this all the time. But yeah, now you got the six on there. Yeah, now you have the major. Yeah, you have the six on top. Six hundred nine. Yeah, there's a six, and again, get, get the nine here if you want that on there. So again, there's no rules to to coming up with cool ending chords. Be creative with it. And yeah, the eleven, the eleven's the, the same as a four. So if you want to get the C added on, you can add a C on there if you want a minor 11 like this. Okay, but it, now, now I'm starting to get away from things that are less typical from, you yeah. know, what Django would have done or... Um, but nevertheless, what's important is that you practice your ending licks so that you have it down in context like this. Nail it 
that every time, no matter where you're at on the fretboard, because you might be up here. That was the Deuce Ambiance lick, actually, there. We're gonna learn that today anyways. Um, but we can just go um, one. And there's that other ending again. Yeah, there's so many cool ending licks. I do have a worksheet somewhere on ending licks that I should bring in sometime. We'll go through ending, fun ending licks. Um, let's everybody play through the melody once, just to get familiar with it. You can read the tabs as written. You're probably gonna wanna get the rhythm. And I know that we're gonna wanna ad lib from it. I was, it's hard for me to play it just straight as written. <laughs> but, but let's just give it a try anyways. Um, oh, by the way, the, the melody gives you some ideas for improvisation. It helps you know which notes to target. Any questions on form or chords? I was just doing pretty stock chords for rhythm. I wouldn't be doing too much fancy stuff unless I really wanted to you know, embellish around it. And we'll talk about that also today. Let's, let's kind of do some uh, different things with this song. Okay, but first of all, melody. So I'm gonna stop there. To me, I wrote it out like this. I tabbed it out like it's a G minor triad. So I'm thinking this. That's that's where I, it, I'm thinking of this chord shape. G, In, G minor's right here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's from the D minor shape. Slid up to the G minor. So I'm actually kind of visualizing a shape when I wrote the... And that helps me for improvisation, because now I could go... I can kind of base my arpeggios off the shape, even though the melody is just... It's just a double stop. And then for the A7, same idea, we have this A major triad. I'm just showing you the shape. So again, this helps you memorize the melody too, I think. So you got G minor, A major triad. And I, I always wanna add this note on, the flat nine. And then move it down a half step to uh, dimin A diminish. And that's not a triad, well it is a triad, but it's A diminished on top of the D7, which creates a D7 what? I'll play it. D7 with a flat and nine, very dark. The melody doesn't contain that note, but that's definitely what you're gonna want. You're not gonna want this, a natural nine. You're gonna want a flat nine. So kind of the trick to me there, this helps me for soloing, was I did A major to A diminish to G minor. So right there alone, if you're wondering some soloing ideas, some navigation, you can kind of base it around the melody. But again, we're not playing the melody, but I just wanted to show you how I wrote it, because I think that helps learn yeah, it. that's pretty good. So you see, the melody almost has these two separate lines. You have this. And then to B flat. That's the first eight bars, again. resolve to B flat. And then now there's another part to the melody. That's why I think this melody is really special. It has two kind of separate lines. Two little separate melodies. And then, you know, of course you piece it together. there that you can do a lot of improvisation just off of playing with the melody notes and also kind of knowing those shapes um, and not only that the melody there's also the half step lower neighbor tone this stuff you can always kind of go a half step below any chord tone meaning this stuff
again, this, this is just really some nice, simple methods to soloing without having to clutter up your mind <laughs> with ideas. Heavily based off of the chord shapes and triads to me are the most important thing. So again, as I know I'm kind of going away from the melody, but the melody is really just kind of built off these concepts. Two, three, four, two, two, three, A. I would highly recommend that you get these shapes down diminished on A as a substitute. Mm -hmm, that's the first A bars, but also that's going to come back later. Measure 9 through 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So here we go. Uh, let's do that again, but now let's actually play the melody. You could even just do this at first. Do that again. Yeah, then you can add that in, the, the other the embellishment. Yes. Again, now the full melody. nice dose of that em embellishing and you know yeah. it adds that a lot and I would highly recommend that you use these type of t techniques for your improv as well Very good. Um, yeah and we're all doing it and just as written to the sheet music yeah. just this came out of the Django fake book by the way it's not necessarily how Angela DeBar would play it or someone I'm um, just kind of I transcribed it in tab to this so that the idea is mainly that we sound good together <laughs> if everyone's reading it so it doesn't sound sloppy if everyone's interpreting it a little bit differently. Um, let's look at the next eight bars. Uh, the A flat seven is just based off an A flat. Yeah, actually, you tell me. What is this? What is that triad? Or what is that chord? It's not a triad, actually. It's a, thank you. It's an A flat major six. But most people play a dominant chord when they're playing the rhythm, but it, it's really a six arpeggio, major six. And I know I say this often, but it doesn't hurt. The major six arpeggio is very neutral. It could be major or it could be a dominant. So you can always, it's, you're safe, is what I'm saying. You can always go. And you don't, it might be on a dominant chord. It might be on a six chord. Sounds great, this. And here it is both ways. Sorry, starting on this. I like to start here. And there I ended on the flat seven. The flat seven's got a lot of weight. So the six is a lot more neutral again. So here's as written. And then it goes to the G minor chord. But again, that's just an arpeggio. I wrote it out just like as if you can see it like this. And of course, if you want to blues it up, you add the flat seven. Little Johnny be good. But again, mainly what I'm demonstrating, it's almost more Charlie Christian style. You know, you, you can see the flat seven. But what's important is when you hit that A flat seven, you get that flavor. The beat, you know, on that B section, I call it B section. I'd like to bend into it too, like this. I don't know, maybe they do it like that on the recording, but. I bend a half step below into the note. Yeah. Oh, so to, to achieve that, you go half step below, below and bend a half step into it, like this. You go the six or below seven? Into the six. Into the six from the flat six. 
So here's this, here's your target note. So instead of doing that, you go. And that has that very Django flavor. Django bent half steps a lot, yeah. And don't over bend it. You might turn your tuner on and double check and just try to make sure you're in tune. I think but, we're good though. Angela Barber, but I think he starts on the, the flat seven. Oh, he does really? Oh, cool. That's good. Yeah, check out Angelo DeBar's recordings. Or any, I mean, a lot of people record this song, obviously. Okay. But uh, but again, I'm just transcribing it, or translating, whatever you want to say, from the fake book of what, you know, he's doing, to simplify it. Because um, a lot of people read from the book. I know I get criticized that, you know, the fake book is not 100% to how, and it's not. It, like any fake book, it's simplified yeah. just so that people can actually play it and read it together. If they write out every little nuance, it'd be really scary to read on paper. So fake, the idea of fake books is someone simplifies it for you. Unfortunately, it's not note for note. Um, so anyways, as written here, it says, you don't have to do that, Ben. Sometimes I like to do this. I love that little lick. So I'd actually go. But that doesn't really work with the melody as written. But I find myself doing that quite a bit, kind of hitting the note. That's like a unison bend, like almost like Johnny Be Good. A unison. And but again, notice the flat seven here, as Tim mentioned. Okay, that's uh, that's enough on that so, phrase. Yeah. Do you do the, okay. So you do the seven. And then you bend. No seven at all. I didn't do the seven oh, you at do all. Six. You do six, the six. All six, straight, yeah. Straight, and then you bend it. Bend the sharp uh -huh. five into, you yeah. Go back to another six. Yes, exactly. You, you double the six. That's a great trick and a great lick again. You hit the note, and you go half step below. Again, Johnny be good. You know, that's what he does there. But again, I love that un that that trick of going. And again, I would I call that a unison bend because you're kind of going up into. I don't know if that's the correct term, but you go half step below your destination, but you hit the first note, and then go half step below, and go right into a note. That was a G minor six arpeggio. So it's a very sweet sound. And if you notice when I was playing the melody too, I was also doing a lot of sliding, the vibrato. You know, that just makes it, I, I love that flavor. Instead of just playing it very square like this. Try to add some slides in there if you can, some nuances, some vibrato. You know, especially if it's your turn to interpret the melody in solo. Um, well, we're almost done because once we get that B, this, I call it the B section here, it's almost like an A, B, A, B form, um, then it just repeats. So we have an A flat six arpeggio. You could even make a note of it for yourself if you don't want to read it. You just think A flat six. One, two, three, A flat. Stop there, that's very important, this embellishment. And that's around the fifth degree of a G minor. Notice notice the chord, this is interesting, notice the chord is G minor six generally, the rhythm player. But you're gonna be hanging around the, the flat six. It's a very darker flavor, very gypsy jazz to hang around and embellish around the flat six. So you have, here's your fifth. You're going. Never mind that the chord is playing major six. You can still go. And so again, this is where it's, there's going to be a clash, but a good clash. It sounds darker. Here's G minor six, and you're going.
again, it's a nice dark flavor. Yeah, try it elsewhere, here. Very, again. Very gypsy jazz. I'm just hanging around the fifth degree. Thanks, Jim. Here's the, here's the major six. Here's a flat six. It's a good clash. I like that. So it's not wrong that the, it's that the, the rhythm player is playing a minor six chord to play the flat six. It just sounds very dark and very, you know, authentic to me. So decorate around that half step above, a half step below. Um, so when you say major six, that's six, right? Yeah, major six, right. The six, six degree right. is a whole step above the fifth. Yeah. So flat six or minor six is a half step above. Right. So again, so we're just decorating. Major six would be six, yeah. yeah. That's correct, good. Yeah. Thank you for clarifying so, so, that. Yeah, so when you have that warning or something, so when you're in a minor key, you, yeah. still, re you still refer to it as the minor six if you're playing a standard minor scale. Is that, or if, is that it's like, is this a, is this, if I'm in G minor, right. is this the six or is this the flat six? That's a flat six. Okay. Yeah, the six would be E natural. Right. Um, and that's that's what's interesting, again, is that the rhythm player might be playing G minor six, but this flat six is okay. As long as, to me, that you resolve it to the D. <laughs> if, I, if I wanted to hang on a note, I would be hanging on the E, the six. That to me, that to me is a chord tone because the rhythm player is playing G minor six. This note builds tension. So you have to use it, you know, however you want. I was gonna say, taste, you know, yeah. So to me, that E flat is an embellishment around the fifth. That's why I'm saying, if you hit that note, you're probably gonna resolve it to D if we're just jamming on G minor. Hit that E flat. Yeah. E flat, do, do. Yeah, yeah, see? There's a lot of tension. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I like it. So, you know, use it. How, it's really important that you really slow down your process of soloing and getting into the colors. Yeah. Also, um, a, a cool note is that major seven, the F sharp. Or here. Sometimes you just have to bathe and choose a note that you want to hang on. So here. Again, that major seven, I often want to pull it to the root, but sometimes I'll hang on it for color. Uh, same with a flat five, I want to get bluesy. You know. Do, 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 do. This up. So again, I'm just talking about choosing different notes against the chord you're on. That's the flat five, this, like a blue scale, yeah. But I'm, I'm not about just like hanging on it. It's gonna be gritty. That almost sounds diminished. Yeah. That's new ambiance. Oh no, sorry, that's swing 40. It's, it's blues and Blues and manure, thank you. Blues, minor blues. I was wondering, wait, where's that from? I love that major seven. So again, I, it, if you're confused about intervals, we're yeah, yeah. essentially we're talking about intervals, you know. Just I'm just gonna stop really quickly, but here's G. This we're we're just hanging on a on, and this could be on a major chord, dominant chord. It's just important that you know the the names and the colors off of G. Here's G, here's your flat two or minor second. I, I'm just gonna use numbers. Flat two, two, flat three, three, four, sharp four or flat five. Tritone. 
And then the fifth, of course, that's known as a power chord, perfect fifth. And then here, this note can be called an augmented fifth, sharp five, or a flat six. I'm gonna call it more of a flat six in this case. See, but to me, again, it creates tension that often wants to resolve, or it can even go up. And there's your six. But I might play it here, just to show it here. We got two more notes, flat seven, and then the major seven, regular seven, this. So please at home, experiment with this with a backing track where it's just staying on G minor and set up some, you know, parameters for yourself. You're gonna say major seven. And just try to hit it and listen to the color, get it in your head. Again, you know, this, this to me is a really nice way of improvising choosing your colors, you know, I, that, just like ending chords, the same thing. You want to really focus, yeah. maybe hit that nine. Yeah. You know, start your, start your lick on that nine. The nine's an easy one to grab, I always show, because if you know your triad, you just go, you hammer on a whole step above your octave. Yeah, just hammer. When you hammer, do you do a down or up score? Always down. Always down? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm saying that because it's a nice, strong sound. Versus this. Yeah. But if I'm in, if I'm doing it on a lick, let's see. I mean, it might depend on my picking pattern. Yeah. But just to demonstrate right now, I would, I would not do an up stroke. Maybe, I mean, it's a different flavor. But anyways, my main point is colors, choosing yeah. your colors and do that. You know, don't get so concerned always about just running licks. Slow down your thinking and, and think about major, the, the intervals. Have a target in mind. Um, maybe try that through the progression. Um, I'll demonstrate, for example, I'm gonna do I'm gonna play with a nine and the and the root. Tim, can you play rhythm for me, nice and medium, like this? I'm gonna go uh, nine to the one. One, two, three, four. Keep going. So there again, every time a, a new chord would change, I went straight to that nine. That's an easy one to grab, because you just find your root and you go up a whole step. Unless it was a dominant chord, on, in this song, I chose flat nines on all those dominant chords. This sound. Here's D. I want the flat nine versus the, uh, the natural nine, the major nine, because it's darker. For a minor key song, I like darker. <laughs> So, so just remember half step above, and that's where that diminished trick comes in, okay? That's the next step is just running through some arpeggios, diminish, etc. So, you know, that's a fun thing to do, but I think the concepts should start with just something simple. Like here's G minor, nine, A, flat nine, D, flat nine, and G minor nine. Uh, but on this A flat here, I went to a natural nine. I went this. <laughs> and then I went to back to G minor. Uh, so to answer your question, uh, flat nine is on the dominant chord when you want it darker sounding. When, however, when I got to that A flat chord there, I wanted it as a natural nine. So I went like this. This is the minor third of the, of the, 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 the Either one, right? Is that why it works then? It's subjective, but that, I mean, that's true. The B flat is there, uh, part of the G minor's flavor more. So maybe it's less harsh of a transition. Um, and that's just not a rule. I mean, I often like this scale, whole tone scale on this chord. 
I'll talk about that in a second as well. Um, so again, you just remember the nine is either going to be a, a whole step or a half step above your note. You just want to choose uh, choose it accordingly. If you want a darker flavor, definitely go for the half step above. That's a good exercise. We're just talking about targeting again to give yourself some information to, you know, uh, again, I call it to give yourself some parameters. Like, hey, I'm gonna go nine one, flat nine, you know. Just... So I'm really just targeting those nines each time to give myself some information, but it also helps, it also kind of creates a compositional device that, that like, you know, helps make it cohesive. Hopefully your solo, there's some kind of logic to it besides just running licks only that are almost sometimes unrelated. Um, so be careful of just running only licks. Licks are great, of course, but to me, they should also have some sort of context, just like this great, a great melody, you know, so. You can fancy it up mm -hmm. all you want. Um, but anyways, we, we're almost done with that melody. Let's look at that A7 chord. Uh, this arpeggio is very uh, telling as far as what to play on it. It does this. So this arpeggio. That's uh, C sharp, dim seven, yeah. This guy. Oh, it's just ri as written there. Can you read the paper? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. C sharp yeah, on, the, on, the, on the A7 chord. We have C, C sharp, sharp, E, G, oh, C sharp, yeah. B flat. And then it goes to the A. So you get create that tension. That's an A7 flat nine chord. So that diminish is just built in. That's a flavor we all really love and that's why you're here because of that sound for Gypsy Jazz. You have the A7 and you have a diminished arpeggio. You can decorate it so many ways. You can do so many different things. It's still just a diminished seven arpeggio. Uh, and this starts on the third on C sharp. So you have this. Notice that tension, the flat nine. And I have to hear if Angel DeBar really hangs on that note there. I, I continued on to the D7. So yeah, so do this. That's pretty striking right there, that flat nine. The, on the D7 chord, on the final measure of that system, you have a D7 with the E flat in the melody. And again, I'm just taking it from the transcription of the chart, but I want, I you know, I, I do recall that, Jan or not Django, Angelo DeBar did something like that. So, um, cause I was like, really on that flat nine? And then notice where it resolves to? Back to the melody. So let's play that D7, or sorry, A7 to the D7 phrase as written. It's gonna sound like this. I'll do it once. So that's it as written there, half notes and quarter notes. One, two, three, four. And then, great. Then we're back to the, you know, what I would basically call the A section melody again. Did we all get that diminished arpeggio? Really some subtle em uh, embellishments around those chord tones. Yeah, one, two, three, four. And then we're back to the melody there. I'll play chords for you guys, a little bit slower. One, A7, one, two, three, four. Yeah, then, duh. 
see that tension. That's what I'm talking about, like that, that it's almost like a, that flat nine on the G7 as a chord tone to hold that note. Again, most people would want to just hold a D note, but, and then, but it, it goes so beautifully back into the G minor. So to me, that, that's also very telling as far as what to play on it, on that D7, diminished seven arpeggio. That diminished seven arpeggio again brings out that E flat. Yeah, so here's D7, and I'm playing uh, F sharp dim. F sharp dim is also the same as A dim, C dim, or E flat dim. They're all the same. It's just you cho choose your starting point. Um, that's kind of what I was saying is that the, that E flat, yeah. So hopefully you're all working on dim seven arpeggios. Or this even. This this is a quick quick lick. Yeah, add some of that gypsy picking like this, gypsy sweet picking like this, and it resolves beautifully to G minor. Sorry, I did this diminished triad, not seven, just a triad. three frets and then resolve it to G minor and I did my G minor inversions like this always know your triad inversions I know there's a lot of stuff to think about but here's that D7 G minor and I do the same picking I do this minor it's just a cool little lick there but what I was saying is take that technique that it, are you guys all working on that sweet picking thing this yeah here it is slow it's harder to do it slow to, to go and you want to rake it you don't you don't want to pick each note you don't want to do this you want to just do this just drag the pick across. That's why it's actually easier to do it fast, don't you think? Because once you get this sweeping, you go. Up, and it starts on an upstroke on the first string, and then down, down, down. And it's a 16th note, one E and a two E and a three E and a four. Yeah. And it works ideal with the diminished, so you can slide it around. Django used it in many ways. Django also used it on an augmented chord, like this. So you can kind of... That creates one of my favorite sounds, the whole tone sound. And it's symmetrical. That's true with an augmented chord. We'll, we'll be, the augmented? Correct. Yes, thank you. Yeah, thanks Bernard, I appreciate that. So you have major, minor, diminish, and augmented. Those are your triad shapes. You, um, that's just every one. Every two, right? Every two. Okay. Every two frets you slide it. Good, yeah, whole tone. And it works great with this gypsy sweet picking lick. It's a different flavor. That sounds more like this now. Yeah. It sounds 
That's the whole chance. It's not as dark as a diminish. And that works on what chords? Dominant. Dominant, yeah. Gives it that kind of circusy flavor. Evan, wake up. It's time to go to school. <laughs> no, not yet. We're sleeping. It's that dreamy, you know, I mean, it's now in cartoon music, of course, and, but it, um, and it's used a lot in French music, Ravel and Debussy. And it doesn't resolve. It just yes, stays. exactly. It's symmetrical and it doesn't resolve. resolve. Creates that. So you have to make sure you resolve it. <laughs> Stevie Wonder uses it like this as an intro. Oh, yeah, yeah. Nice, yeah. And then he resolves it. Exactly. What's, uh, what's, what's the shape you're using there? Uh, this. It's just two notes. Oh, it's not, it's not I'm not hit. Yeah, not, yeah, not doing it. I'm not doing a triad. He only does two notes. He goes on the on, on these two strings. It's as you can see, it's just parallel. So it's, it, it's just, and that's where you come up. Guitar players love those two strings yeah. because you can do stuff like this. You just slide around. If you, if you want to play fast, you do stuff like this. And this would all be on a G7 chord. I mean, again, it's just kind of this never ending circular sound that should resolve C major and then whole tone. <laughs> exactly. But like you said, it doesn't resolve, you know, but you want to use, I like to use it so it does resolve. Yeah. So I try to make sure I practice my licks, quote, uh, so it does resolve. Just like the diminish. If I do a diminish arpeggio, I want to resolve it to something. And that's why I always make sure that you practice the arpeggio, but connect it to your chord so it does not, or unless it's a, unless, this is on swing chaton, you can do two diminishes, diminished arpeggios side by side. So on the A7, you do C sharp dim. Then on the D7, you go down a half step and do C dim. But now you gotta resolve it to G minor. So that's, now we're again taking this information and applying it to some soloing ideas. You have G minor. C sharp diminish, arpeggios, C diminish, and then resolve it to G minor. Again, G minor. Ready, diminish, C sharp. And then C diminish. And then back to G minor blues. But I have an easier way to think about it than just thinking about it like I was just yelling out. That was, again, following the melody. I like to think of it like this, and I have an A2 too, I can pass out. I like to think of it as G minor something. I'll play an arpeggio, G minor six, this is off my sheet. So I just did G minor six. I did it three octaves, because it's, it's easy if you do it this diagonal method. because it just repeats itself every octave, the same fingering. So you have this. Please think intervals. One, flat three, five, six. Know the formula for a minor six or whatever arpeggio. So here it is again, one flat three, five, six, next string. Then the next string, one flat three, five, six. Next string, one flat three, five, six. Yeah, so again, there's some things here that you gotta know, I think are important. Be able to go like this, root, fifth, root, fifth, root, fifth. That's, that, I did a little flat, a little bluesy there on accident, that was, so root, fifth, root, fifth, root, fifth. Do that first before you try to do the whole arpeggio. Just make sure you're, you're guiding your finger through this shape, this. And then add on the interval accordingly, flat three, whole step. See, you're, I'm breaking it down to two chunks. And that 
now to be face value for G minor six. You see G minor six, you play G minor six. I do have a couple YouTube videos out. It's called Swing Chaton Diagonal Arpeggio Studies. I love, I love demonstrating on this particular song. That's what I'm doing right now. So again, that's just a good study. But what's, what's the next part is what's really fun is for that next chord, A7, you stay on G and you turn it to diminish seven. So you don't have to leave your root. This is just more of an exercise, but still it's great for thinking wherever you're at on the fretboard. So you have G minor six for two bars. G diminished seven. And then now it's following the dominant cycle. This is a good trick to know. A7 to D7 is the cycle of fourths. And then we can go down a half step and do F sharp dim. And back to G minor six. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't do descending, but it's nice to go descending and ascending. It's just easier to demonstrate ascending for everything. So you have G minor six. G diminished on the A7. F sharp dim on the D7, back to G minor six. Let's do that again. G minor six, four. G dim on the A7. F sharp dim on the D7 and G minor six. Good practice. Again, four. G dim. So you just turn that root to diminish. Down a half step. Resolve it. G minor six. Nice. Triplets. Oh, I messed up. One, two, three, four. And then diminish it. Uh. A7. Oh, I think we're off chord. Yeah, sure. I'm just demonstrating some different yeah. rhythms here. The triplet allows you to go up and down. Do 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 do. Again, it's just fun with arpeggios, you know, it's, it's definitely a technical study, but it sounds cool. A lot of guys throw those licks in their solos, you know, but the concept is still the same. Uh, I love the concept. G minor, G diminished, mm -hmm. F sharp diminished, G minor. And again, I'll show it to you just with chords, if I'm doing a chord solo. Diminish it. Down a half step. Back to G minor. Diminish. Oh, one, two, three, G minor. Diminish. Down a half step. Back to G minor. And repeat, G minor. Diminish. Down a half step. And G minor. And again, G minor. Diminish. Down a half step. And G minor. Again. Diminish. Diminish. You get the idea, right? G minor. G diminish. F sharp dim. G minor. G minor. Diminish it. F sharp. Diminish. And again, G minor. Diminish it. Etc. Hi, P. Does that make sense again? It, I, I love sharing these concepts. Yeah. I think that's, it's nice to have some sort of method and approach again, like how do I do this? Every song is different, but then again, some of these songs, there are some commonalities to it too. Hi, come on in. 
Um, when you mean when you go uh, to the F sharp, is that F sharp diminished? Yes. Okay. Yeah, F sharp dim. Yeah, yeah again, that's just a trick. So if you know your dim seven arpeggios, great. You just have fun connecting them. Uh, you know, it's, it's symmetrical. So a lot of guitar players. Um, G minor, G diminished. F sharp diminished and then G minor. Back to G minor. Six, like yeah, five, and at six, that six, point, yeah. you, you know, arpeggio or some blues licks on G minor, yeah, yeah. something, maybe the cliche, I went like this. That was a G minor lick of some sort. Diminish. Diminish. G minor six. Diminish. Down a half step, resolve. Etc. So yeah, it's so much fun to navigate. And that's what I like to do here is just show you some tricks that you might not have normally thought about. And not a lot of it's I mean you could run scales, you can you can go through G, melodic minor, and harmonic minor, but it's just nice to have some quick tricks I, I essentially where we're just kind of, a lot of it's just extracting from the melody. I find that's very important. Um, and we already talked about that A flat seven, seven chord. If you're wondering, what do I do on that A flat seven chord? You can kind of play A flat seven or A flat major six. And that's the only chord that kind of stands out. And then resolve it right back to G minor. So I think that right there is a good study. That alone, isolating that A flat seven to G minor, back and forth. Just practice that. A flat seven, G minor. A flat, G minor. Yeah, again, A flat seven, G minor. That A flat's a very special sound. Again. A flat. G minor. A flat. Yeah. Hey Jack, welcome. We're just finishing up here. But again, that's my approach to practicing these songs often. It's just isolating it as, as we're doing section by court not even section you know smaller details than that if you need to break it down for improvisation don't try to do the whole well uh, my recommendation again if you're not ready just break it down into two chords at a time just you know like we're doing here we're going back and forth And then you'll get that part and then add on the next two chords. That way you're really navigating through the changes and you're not just kind of, you know, kind of getting it 50% and not knowing where you're at. You're really getting every change and hopefully connecting your ideas. That's the hard part is to make your ideas connected and yeah. flowing. So slow down your practice. You know, I know it's it on connecting ideas. You it's hard. You learn. You on a special note or well, kind of like what I was demonstrating there, hi Paul. Kind of like what I was demonstrating at the yeah. begin at earlier. Yeah. Target like having a concept or having some sort of map, yeah. or you know, a, a template or a, whatever you want to call it. Like I was saying, hang on the nine. And then maybe a different degree, like have, like that's just kind of a good practice thing, but you get to connect the dots. And it gives your solo some logic. There's, you know. So you progress to the ground for the nine on the flat. Yeah, line. yeah, connect yeah. it. Just like this melody. Yeah. The melody has these two parts, but it's decorated in between. You can add. Right. You know, you can hit those notes. So the progression is really the, the notes, the ninth and the ninth. Right. And well, that's, yeah. yeah. That's specific to the song. So next time, um, actually, I'm going to send you guys, check out my YouTube for this, my video for this. I'll send you, um, I'll send you the PDF for it. You guys can work on these, the diagonal arpeggios for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's a good study. A lot of diminishing. 
um, whole tone. So um, next next time we'll do do ambiance. And if there's any requests for songs, just let me know. We're gonna